You gotta slouch because your body's taller than mine. My legs are taller than you. I don't know. I think you just slouch. That's why I seem to be taller than I'm you. I'm sitting straight sit. up right now. So anyway, this is video. From or actually a few videos. It's probably gonna be more than one because I don't want it to be terribly, terribly long. Is from the NRA convention in Indianapolis, Indiana. Right. Oh, it's so much fun. It was. It was. I mean, the thing is, we do. Uh, thanks to the Theron Defense Company, we do both the Shot Show in Vegas and the NRA wherever it is they have it. And I'll be honest with you, I personally love the NRA way more than Shot Show. I do too. For one, it's it seems more laid back, more relaxed. Where the what I see it is is it's there's more people, or it seems like there's more people because. Uh, the, the SHOT Show is only open to the uh, to, to dealers or people in the business. And I know that guy, sorry, I got a red hot in my mouth. But it's people that's in the gun business or outdoor business and stuff. It's dealers and business oriented. Where right. the NRA is, as long as you have an NRA membership or family of the NRA membership, or however that works, then you can go. And there's usually more of our kind of people, I'd like to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You and know, we're not real businessy type of people. Right. But anyway, so uh, we won't bore y'all too much more along with this kind of so stuff. So let's get on, to it. Get on to the, the video, video. Different, the different video footage we got of it. And it was, the funny thing is, is Heather is, she's not terrified of flying anymore. It's not flying. I mean, it's, it's flying. It's falling from the sky from a plane. That is what I'm scared From of. From a plane. Or with the plane. Falling with the plane. plane. Falling you know, to the ground. Like we're cruising along and Actually, that's probably not too bad happens. either. The falling to the ground. It would be the really fast yeah. stop at the bottom of the... Yeah. Yeah. That's probably what you should be most worried that's about. That's what I'm scared of. The takeoff. Take not so bad. Yeah. I do have a little issue, but... I got better this time from the very the first time. Oh yeah, yeah. Time. I'm a lot better. Compared to the first time, you're a hell of a lot better. But uh, you still, you're pretty. I'm nervous, <laughs> but it's okay to be a little nervous. I mean, you're only going how fast? I'm still confused on how they get a plane up in the sky and stay there. Move it at about 300 mile an hour and it'll do it. Uh, <laughs> Lots of things chicken. fly at 300 mile an hour. <laughs> For those of you that have never flown and have a fear of flying like myself, when I, well, well, I guess I still kind of have a fear, but anyway, when you get up there, it is so beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Other than the fact, you really need sunglasses, though. Everything is white. It's kind of like, it's almost, well, I guess it's not always white. I guess when we were, you know, up last time, it was cloudy, cloudy, so it's really white all the time. But it is it's beautiful. You can see some beautiful stuff. Sometimes it's cloudy. Sometimes it just looks like cotton, and it's just, it's beautiful. It helps keep your mind off falling, I guess, <laughs> I'd have to say. I did notice that landing is a big problem for me. Yeah. I think that's the biggest problem. Yeah. Is landing. Yeah. Because we obviously had. Uh, it reminded me of the uh, movie Flight. You remember that movie? The the the. the Denzel yeah, Washington. Denzel and he. Denzel. Was strong, he was an alcoholic. Denzel had a problem. Well, I swear something was wrong with our little pilot. The pi She's just talking about the pilot that took us from Louisiana to. Dallas. We went to Dallas. Yeah, but when you land, I've landed before. You, you glide, go, glide down, down and then you feel and you, uh, and then no, it's, no, it's it's kind of like uh, uh, and then you sit down, you know, because you glide along the runway for a minute and it sits down real nice and easy. No, not this one. He went. It was like yeah, he come gliding in like this, and there wasn't no there was no coast, and it was just bop. And then <laughs> you go, ah. Yeah, I think yeah. he might have stayed up having too many toddies the night before. Well, see, know. Denzel was on toddies and cocaine. Oh. And well, if you've seen that movie, you've seen what else he was on, but. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Dallas is really nice because there's no way that you could walk to where you need to be. So they have these little trains. Trams. Tram. 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 Yeah. Train, tram, same thing. And it takes you wherever you know C, A, B, wherever you need to be. Gates. That was awesome. Yeah, it's at gate A, gates B, and gates C. C, D, E, and F. Is there that many? I don't know. Oh, I don't know how many it was either. <laughs> but what, you're lucky to have those in Dallas. Yeah, because yeah, there's no way you can walk to the places you had to go. <laughs> But what's really, really cool was Andy from Thurion, whenever I looked at my air stuff, I noticed that we was flying. He, he booked me first class from Dallas to Indianapolis. That was really sweet of him. He didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> it was no, an accident. <laughs> funny thing was... He just played that off. Yeah, I know. The funny thing was, is, is Heather said, oh, you got his first class from Dallas to Indianapolis? He's like... That's oh, did I? I didn't mean yeah. to. That's why they cost so much. <laughs> he screwed that up. He had the perfect opportunity to really try to impress her or something, you know. And, I mean, you've already paid the money for first class. You could have said, oh, yeah, only the best for you, sweetie. And when you got off the phone, like, dang it. <laughs> well, let me tell you, now that Andy has presented first class to me, that's the only way I'll choose to fly. I don't think so, because I'm going to so probably fly. Nice. <laughs> I'm he, not pay, I can't pay No, the, I'm talking about Andy. Like, no, when we go not, to Vegas, you can hang he can that put up. you in coach, and I'm going to fly first class. Oh, oh, oh. No, I have to be in first class, too, because let me tell you. Well, actually, you know, you you can take the girl out of the country, but you can't, can't, can't take the country out of the girl. No. Heather, well, now, I can't say much. I climb on first class wearing my Saints jersey. Heather climbs into first class class the first thing she does kick my shoes up and prop my feet up and then something I anyway just let it all go let them feet shine. so she, yeah she's barefooted on, on, on first class and but Jeff was really excited because he got to eat warm nuts he yeah. loved warm hey, nuts. Hey, look, I love warm nuts. Uh, they yes. warmed my nuts up for me before they brought them to me with coffee and we had drinks and had, did they warm your nuts up too? I had warm nuts too. You had warm nuts too. And they were really good and when you ran out, what they do? They brought you more warm nuts. Warm nuts, yeah. And then we had, uh, we had, I had like, a little glass of wine. We had like a uh, gin and tonic and some wine. I had wine, red wine with my, they brought me a dinner. And the funny thing was, is I just ate. I didn't know they were oh, going to no. Fetus. China. Yeah, I just ate China at the the, the, uh, the Dallas airport, and as soon as we get on the plane, the little guy comes along. He's like, "Will you be dining with us today?" What? And I'm like, "No, I'm good." What, what, what do you got? And Jeff's like, "Yeah." Hey, I, I never did. turn up. I, I never pass up the opportunity you to eat. Just ate. I never pass up the opportunity. Hey, got to keep it. I mean it. It was already paid for. Andy already paid for. You got to do it. I mean, you know, why waste the money? He paid the extra money for first class. You got to make it worth it. Oh, first class is nice though. So if you ever, ever get the opportunity to fly first big, class. Big leather reclined back and You have seats all the leg room. All the space in front of you. And they just cater to you the whole time. You need anything. They brought me out warm washcloth to wash my hands before I ate my nuts. Yeah. <laughs> As you're flying down into uh, Indianapolis, I noticed that I was not in the woods anymore because when you look down, there was no trees. No more trees, just fields, fields, and fields, and fields. Corn. But we made I guess. it. I don't know, it was dirt. It was right at the point of planting season. They were getting ready, so. We made it to Indianapolis, Indiana, and we got settled in, and uh, we ended up having a nice dinner with Andy and them to prepare us for the next day, which was when we got to yep. go. So I just got finished eating on the plane and Andy took me straight off the plane and took us to the yeah. Olive Garden. And by the time I finished eating at the Olive Garden, that's what I say. That Olive Garden. I, what I, what I say though, nice. when, I, when we, I was sitting there with a thing and I was like, Jeff oh man, said, I'm so stuffed because I've already ate like twice. And he's like, like, I'm just going to get something, something small. small. And I got the uh, was the, uh, the 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 platter that lets you try a little bit of everything: uh, lasagna, the spaghetti, the linguine, the fettuccine, the wines. Dude, by the time I finished eating that evening, I was miserable. <laughs> so anyway, 
after Jeff, you know, ate all day. We went back, we went to sleep, we got up the next day, and we got to see the booth of where we was gonna be at and help get everything lined up for, you know, doors to open. That's the only thing about the NRA compared to SHOT Show is, is, is you can't, we can't get as big a booth, or Andy and them can't get as big a booth, so we're kind of cramped into this one little area compared to the, the booth is twice the size of it at the SHOT Show. But hanging out with Andy is, is a lot of fun. He's a really good Oh, yes, fella. Andy's awesome. <laughs> But I will have to give congrats to Andy because usually when I do these NRA shows and shot shows, it's me with a bunch of guys. That's just... But he was nice enough to bring along his wife. Yeah. And she was so awesome too. We hung out in the booth. Yeah. Well, see, like with me, you know, I have to help out oh, with information cute. and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> I, when I go to those things, you know, Andy's pretty much by himself. So you got thousands of people no. walking up what? to the booth and I, there's there, everybody's got questions there's no way andy can do all that very so to, i have to help out jeff, give information what, about his guns what jeff's stuff. trying to say is andy brings jeff along for the simple fact that jeff really really likes to talk and he will talk about andy's guns non-stop the you, whole time we're there are you saying i talk a lot you talk a lot you know, actually, Andy so, said that too. Actually, as I remember what Andy said is, I really need you at this show because you're the only person that I know that can talk 10 hours a day for four days straight. <laughs> this is true, he can talk. We, we, we made, it's a gift, really. Yeah. We made a little joke where we put tape over his mouth. And said, said, you know, Do not open till 9 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> That's what time the show opens. Jeff likes to talk a lot. But I had a really cool job. I'm brochure. Heather girl. had the the most important job important of all. Because I'm the one sending them home with information. That they Handing can contact, out brochures. You know, after yep. the show, when they get home and they're going through all their stuff, they'll yep. say, yeah, that's that lovely lady that gave me this. That's a very important job. That's and I also had the job of getting people to sign up for the awesome uh, yeah. Uh, hey, look. The 19, uh, 1776 17, yeah. serial number on uh, when Andy and Three on Defense got to their 1776 serial number, he realized, look, I need to do something special with this receiver. Let's let's come up with something cool for it. And they knew that the NRA show was coming up, so what they decided to do was they hydro dipped the American flags all over this it's gun. It was, it was really cool. And he they named it. He named it Liberty, and he decided to give it away in a raffle, free to enter at the NRA convention. So Heather's other job was to make sure that people signed up I, for the draw. I was always like, oh, excuse me, excuse me, would you like to sign up to win this lovely nine yeah. millimeter? Because everybody's like, is it a 22? No, you got to do the whole. But a lovely yeah. nine millimeter carbine. One thing that I would like to give a really big thanks to Andy for, you know, we do go and we do help him out in the booth and stuff, but the opportunity to meet fans. That's the main so reason why we go. Much fun. That's the main reason why we go. I mean, it's cool to go and talk guns and see stuff and all, but the main reason why we go and the main reason why he asks us to come is because it gives our fans a chance to come and meet us. You know, we tell people ahead of time, look, we're doing so and so show, and, and a lot of people show up for it. And what, what's crazy is, is even the ones that don't know we're there, we'll be walking through that place and something like the NRA show is, am I talking too much? You cut me smooth <laughs> off, I was talking and the then NRA, But like, anyway, the NRA show, we see tons of people who are oh, fans of ours. You remember, uh, we have a, a fan, Aaron, and he sees us at uh, the, NRA, the, the NRA every convention. year. <laughs> but do you remember what he was wearing? Man, you can see oh. this dude from across the way it was like that was the brightest shirt i've ever seen if i recall on the video that i saw it was the picture of something it was green wasn't it a fluorescent green bright bright yellow bright, green yellow yeah like real it tinted my hair <laughs> yeah. the color because it was so bright it was like <laughs> on the camera the camera was but picking up the green bouncing off of heather i'll have you know aaron said that he did that on purpose that way you know if he, draw attention to him right that way you know he'd be like hey check that dude out with that cool shirt right <laughs> then i met roy and cindy which i love it when girls come up and they are fans of my stuff too yeah that, a that lot of times what's really, cool with really that good what's cool with that is a lot of women talk about how they got into shooting because of heather you know uh yes shooting and guns is a male dominant sport uh or, or thing 
but uh, there are a lot of women out there, and we meet a lot of those women. And I love the shows. fact that women, the husband and wives, watch my stuff together. That makes me so happy. It was more than one. It was quite a few I of know. them, actually. Okay, and then uh, let me see who else comes to mind. You Jay. remember Jay? The yeah. uh, uh, what is it? Uh, he 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 uh, he, he Eagle, has a reloading uh, company. Ammo Eagle. Ammo? Uh, I don't remember. He has a reloading company, and he actually he has sent me and Heather uh, some 45 ACPs and stuff. And I got some other cases I need to send up to him. He's asking me to send up to him. But he has he'll some reload cool and send back he to does us. Himself, though he has. Yeah, I, well, he's he's a really really big 57 fan, and he was uh, giving Heather the rundown on some of the 57 stuff and some of the things that they do with that and barrels and stuff. And yeah, it's pretty interesting stuff. And that's what's cool about these shows is you get to meet people like that and find out new stuff to you. You know, 57 stuff is new to us but it's pretty interesting yeah. that's what i really love about going to the shows i really honestly have to say it's my favorite part to meeting people yeah whenever uh we was talking to andy about going to the nra he had con he had contact called me or something and told me he said heather i'm making something really really awesome that i want to put in our booth it's gonna draw attention I bet you it'll draw attention, and I couldn't wait to see it. And when I got there, it was a co. Come on. What's co? Come on. <laughs> it was a double barrel gun thingy. It was co a co coaxial mounted Thurion Defense nine millimeter double nine millimeters with two 50 round Beta Mag drums on both sides with double flashlights. It was like headlights, yeah, pretty much wherever the headlights were hitting is where the bullets are going to be hitting. It's mounted on a tripod, man. It was, that thing was cool. Semi-auto, yeah, yeah, they're not, not full auto. auto. But the thing is, with two of them there, and you get the triggers working at the same time, you could really get a high rate and of fire. Because none of us can own a fully auto anyway, so. Not but, if it's made, it's, it's post-1986. You cannot and, own a gun made after 1986 that's fully auto. But I thought it was cool because Andy told me, well, he, he was going to sell it. If somebody wanted to buy it, he was selling it. But it was going to be a high price to get rid of it. But I had my fingers crossed that it would not sell because, Andy, if you're watching this, I'm going to remind you, <laughs> you told me that if you did not sell it at the NRA show that you was going to bring it to me and let me shoot it. Yes. Yeah, or so, send it down here. We we'll just send it down here. You ain't got to bring it. We we'll no, just send you it down bring here. It and bring your fully autos when you come because I love to play well, with those. That's kids. true, too. But no, look, I mean, everybody, everybody stopped and had to, to hold that, get hold a it, handle on that gun. Take pictures. Especially the old guys, the old guys like the, uh, the old vets from like World War II or Korean War and stuff like that. They really wanted to hold it. It's like, man, it's like an anti aircraft gun, which reminds me of something really funny. All these people were staying. I gotta tell y'all this story. This is the weirdest thing to ever it. happen in my life. I really hated that I was in the bathroom during this story. This is the strangest, one of the, it might be the strangest moment of my entire life. I was standing behind a group of about seven guys who Andy was talking to about the coaxial mounted gun, okay? And you know, everybody's wanting to hear about what, what he had done and stuff. and. I was standing behind them, and there was a, a tall uh, black fellow standing beside me, and with his partner, they were both wearing suits, both ball headed, a white guy and a black guy standing together with suits on. Okay, and I'm just thinking they're business guys and whatever, and the black guy says, uh, real, real, you know, uh, uh, perky like. I wonder if it's effective against drones. And I thought he was kidding. And I'm a kidder, okay? So I turned to him and said, well, yeah, it's effective against drones. He says, really? So then he spins to his partner and they're kind of talking to where I can't hear and stuff. And he says, what, what is it again? I said, it's a nine millimeter. And they start talking and all. And I could hear him saying something about funding and something about, uh, 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 f uh, I forget. It was, it, was, it was a strange conversation about funding and, and stuff and, and clearance. And then he spins back, he says, by then, Andy's standing right beside me, you know, and he's up grinning and he don't realize what's going on here. Now I'm starting to think it's something kind of strange. The guy turns to me and says, but how do we know it's effective against drones? At this time, you're waiting to get punked. Yeah, and I'm looking at this dude. I said, actually, man, I was kidding about the drone thing. And by then, him and his buddy are standing right, right in my face, real serious like, and says, we weren't kidding. We're tired of being followed by the drones. 
And I stood there and uh, uh, looked at Andy and he's <laughs> looking at me and I looked back at this dude and they're still just as serious could be. They was like the men in black standing And I'm going, hold up, somebody, I'm being punk. You know, somebody's supposed to come out with a camera at any minute. You know, are these guys are supposed to bust out laughing. It's a big joke. And they didn't. We just stood there and it was still serious and I'm going, well, and I look back at Andy, you know, he's the owner of the company. I'm ready to just turn it all over to him. Like, well, and he says, well, they're nine millimeters, so they're only going to be effective probably out to 150 to 200 yards. The guy says, would that be effective against drones? I'm like, well, it depends on how close the drone is. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm, I'm freaked out, man. I'm kind of worried. I'm scared about this because these two guys, I mean, like they're probably 40 to 50, somewhere in there. And I mean, well dressed and all, but they were dead serious about this. And I was very uncomfortable. And Andy says, well, it's a uh, 9,500 and here's my card. <laughs> and we just kind of shuffled down <laughs> away from them. And I'm still waiting for these dudes to break out and laugh and all, I was just kidding you. They didn't, they made the corner. We we're on a corner booth and they stopped again and they checked out the gun some more. And I'm going, whoo, man, <laughs> That's just, that was really, really freaky. <laughs> well, that was freaky in itself. But then whenever one of our fans had come back and told me about is it Arizona or something like that, that you can actually get a license to shoot a drone if it's so many feet down over your property or yep. something. Yeah. And it, I was like, I didn't really honestly believe that we had them, that big of a problem. Them boys must have been from Arizona is all I can figure because uh, I, I don't know. I can't imagine anybody. And they were, uh, they were, like I said, they were dressed up like business dudes. like they, And they're talking about funding and, that's what I said. and all this stuff. and that's you know. What, that's what I said. They was like men in black. It was like the men in black. They could have been aliens. I didn't think about that. They may have been aliens may being have been followed like by the drones and they were looking for... That's why they were so serious. That's what it was. They figured it out. Men aliens. in black, creepy stuff. No, they weren't men in black. They were straight up aliens. That's what it was. <laughs> But I hope y'all enjoyed this video. There will be a part two to this because it's really long, obviously. As you can see with Jeffrey, the way Jeffrey talks, it will be really long. It's not my fault. But I hope y'all enjoy this and be looking forward to part the two. second part. Part two. I was talking. Part two. I was talking. Part two. Oh, I give up. <laughs> I give up. What with you?